Where did Polly Perret get the inspiration to play Abby? Why do people love watching NCIS so much? Why would Mark Harmon put a dead lizard in his fellow actor's trailer? Clearly, a lot of stuff goes on behind the scenes of NCIS. If you're a fan of the show, you're probably going to enjoy these. Today, we're going to show the funniest NCIS on set moments and bloopers. First up, the class clown. It looks like Michael Weatherly finally cracked the mystery of why fans still stick around for the show and love it so much even after two decades of seasons. There's stuff, but really, what is it? It's the Dukes of Hazard in the Navy. It's Chips meets Hill Street Blues. It's My Fair Lady meets, uh, Mr. Ed. Uh, okay, that's a first, but it's definitely an interesting take. It's great, yes, but we're not trying to say that there isn't room for even more improvement. This is a show that has everything except a really good hummable-like credit sequence. He then proceeded to sing a random melody whilst trying to also get in a short synopsis of the show. He's right, though. A catchy theme tune is probably the only thing missing. He's also the class clown on set and has often been caught doing something hilarious. One time, he showed up dressed as Elvis just for laughs. He's really witty during interviews, too. We can't get enough of Michael. Ladies and gentlemen, allow us to present NCIS comedy. Michael just kept coming up with new gems. He describes the show, this is a tale of private investigators that are working really hard, and they're gonna find that evidence and test it forensically for clues that may help them solve the case. Wow, no way anyone could have guessed that. Next, an odd source of inspiration. One of the characters we just can't get enough of on the show is Abby Shudo, a fan favorite. Actress Polly Perrette has to suffer quite a bit of a transformation to become the goth lab queen we know and love. She's a natural blonde, and she has to not just dye her hair to look the role, but she's gotta have her iconic neck tattoo put on every time she has a day of filming, and of course, she hates it. It sticks everywhere. While being interviewed, she talked about how as the day goes by, the fake tattoo becomes gummy and sticky too. It must be pretty unpleasant for her since there have been multiple unsuccessful attempts to make the show's writers give her permission to get the tattoo removed from the character, but we couldn't possibly imagine Abby looking any other way than her iconic goth getup. She just wouldn't be the same when she's not goth. In spite of her dark and alternative wardrobe, she may just be the happiest goth we've seen. Not to mention her bubbly personality really goes well with her love of hugs. Take a look at her farting hippo Bert, or her colleagues. She's all about spreading warmth and love. Besides spending a lot of time in the hair and makeup room, how does Perrette ready herself to play the witchy-looking lab nerd? She took inspiration from a dog. That dog was an adorable and highly alert mutt named Cece. Abby stands very straight, and the way she walks and turns around is all based on the dog. Basically, all her mannerisms are based on it. Next, mistakes in the show. Next up, we're going to show you a chronological blooper. In the NCIS Season 3 finale episode, Hiatus Part 2, we find out that Gibbs joined NIS, and in the same year switched to NCIS in 1992 after the death of his wife and daughter. But in the episode Ice Queen, which aired three years prior, he tells Lieutenant Commander Rob that he's been an agent for 19 years. If that's the case, he would have to join NIS in 1984. Yeah, that's definitely a mistake. Up next, unsanitary habits. Now we're going to take a look at a pretty heavy character mistake from the show. Multiple times throughout the show, autopsies are performed by Ducky, who's donned the same clothes he had on in the field. This is a big error, as doing this in real life would put all of our favorite characters at risk of cross-contamination. It's just unhygienic, and a total OSHA violation too. No way would anyone let this happen in real life or on the show. We'd expect the show's team to be aware of this, since it's basic procedure in the real world. Also in the real world, when Gibbs' team is investigating a crime scene or visiting Abby's lab or the autopsy room, they definitely have to wear a forensic boiler suit to prevent tainting the evidence in any way. But the choice to not have our favorite characters don these suits was probably just a creative one they did so that the audience wouldn't be confused when telling the characters apart. Then we have the Gibbs goof up. One more mistake the show made was with Gibbs. We had Gibbs aged 53 at the start of the show. As the show goes on though, of course he gets older too, meaning that from 2018 onwards, he's officially eight years older than the NCIS field agent mandatory requirement age of 57. This is probably the most serious blooper. Next, road trips. There's also some bloopers from The Office. The team's office is situated in the District of Columbia. Many episodes start off with the crew doing some work on their desk, and then Gibbs will come in and drag everyone to Virginia Beach or Norfolk after some time. Without traffic, this ride would take four to five hours at least. It's around 250 miles, but they don't ever get too late. They sure aren't getting there on private jets, so maybe keeping that in mind would be helpful next time. The scene was towards the team's office windows, a view of the display ship. Barry, the Anoxia River is visible and is totally fine, but the view is the rotunda of the U.S. Capitol building. This is actually north of the Navy Yard, not south, like every other object viewed through the window. Maybe there's more mistakes with placements and geography in the show. If you ever spotted any yourself, which we missed, leave a comment down below and let us know. Geography, anyone? Yet another geographical mistake is that too frequently, scenes that take place in Virginia near Washington, D.C. show mountains nearby in the background. The Blue Ridge Mountains are even more to the west side than would be shown here. Other times, a farm near Reston was mentioned. If you're not familiar with that area, you should probably know that Reston, near Virginia, has no farms that anyone knows of. Now, pranks on set. Next up, we've got quite the story to tell you guys. Mark Harmon, who you know better as Leroy Gibbs, isn't the stern and serious guy you see on the show. He's actually 
quite fun to be around when he's not in character. It's no secret to his co-stars that he's got a really bizarre sense of humor. He even played a prank on one of them, in which he took a dead lizard and hung it in his co-star, Cote de Pablo's room, with a suicide note around poor creature's neck too. It read, I couldn't take it anymore. Away from the cameras, these guys actually do share a nice friendship. They appeared together in a talk show in which Harmon saw de Pablo's hand on his leg while they were having a laughing fit. This made them go even crazier in hysterics. Lastly, gun issues. We have yet another blooper for you guys now. When looking at shell casings, there's multiple references to the fact that it's probably either a Beretta or a Glock. For those of you who don't know a lot about guns, the difference would be really obvious to someone with even a little experience. When dealing with a Glock, the firing pin leaves a very distinct mark on the primer. Also, in many cases, there's a mark left on the mouth of the case. A Beretta could leave a tiny mark on the primer. That's all. Characters who are trained professionals really ought to know all this stuff. Another technical mistake they made here was that they didn't consider how handguns are not as easy to operate as they seem. When one is fired, there's an impact and recoil. When you fire multiple shots one after the other, and then, it's absolutely impossible that there's no recoil. Sure, these guys are trained professionals, but they're still human. In another blooper, the gang was discussing the differences between an ash bat and a maple bat. They explained that while ash bats are more popular, they are less reliable and can explode randomly. Maple bats make a clean break. However, if you know anything on the subject, you know that whoever did the dialogue in the scene messed up. It's actually maple bats that explode and ash that have a clean getaway. If you enjoyed this video, please give us a like and let us know in the comments what you think. Check out our other videos and subscribe to be a part of the fun. Make sure to click the notification icon so you can see our new videos as soon as they're uploaded. That's it for now.